Hi there, well women. So I want to check in because last week I didn't really get to check in with you about my progress, which was really week six. And this would be my seventh week of being in a calorie cut. I'm gonna do the rest of this week and all of next week in a calorie cut. So I've gone from about 2000 calories down to 1,650 calories on purpose to burn body fat. And then we're going on vacation for a week. And then when we return, I'm gonna take a week to kind of come back to normal. So I'm gonna track at 1,650 calories for that uh, return from vacation week, which is the week of August 9th. And then from there, I'm gonna start a reverse diet is what it's called so that I can move myself from this lower calorie range back up to a higher calorie range and find what my maintenance range is now. And I will share how that's gonna look and how I really know how to do that on Thursday, August 12th here, live in the group. So I'll put a, um, an event up for that in case you want to listen in, in case you are just curious about the process of how and why would we do a low calorie session period of time, cut diet for an amount of time rather than just until we get to a number on the scale and then actually go back up to maintenance for a while. And I'm doing that on purpose. The big idea behind it is that this is really the long-term healthy solution to staying well long-term. It could be a tool you use if you have a lot of weight you wanna lose and it would let you change your body composition over time in a safe, effective way that is more likely to be, um, I don't wanna say permanent, more likely that you would change your body composition and then not gain back weight. Does that make sense? Pretty interesting, huh? It's something I had not truly ever heard of even until a few months ago, even after being a faster way to fat loss client and a coach. In the faster way, we use a little bit different approach to fat loss over time. And it'll be fun for our VIP members who are in my VIP group to get to talk about that and compare it to reverse dieting and being in maintenance for a while. Thursday night, 7.30, we're having a special head trainer talk to us there. So I'll be able to recap some of that for you. Some of it won't apply to everyone if you're not in the faster way to fat loss, but it'll be interesting just to gain some more knowledge and hear why in the faster way are we using a certain method and what it, how does it compare or line up with um, this concept of choosing a time frame to be in a cut like I did eight weeks and then choosing to gently add more calories each week to get back up to maintenance and staying in maintenance for most of the time. We wanna stay in maintenance for most of our life. And so um, when I think of this now, I'm thinking, okay, well, if I spend eight weeks in a cut, then I definitely wanna stay at maintenance for at least two months. I would like to spend most of the year in maintenance. I would, I'm pretty happy with my body composition at this point and I am very clear after now six weeks of a cut that it just feels so good to be at maintenance and be tracking macros because you eat plenty of food, you have so much energy, you see yourself building muscle and you also know that there's a food freedom in knowing I'm putting in the amount of food I need, it's not too much, it's not too little because I'm tracking and it just feels excellent. It's an interesting feeling I had never had before because like so many of you said when I asked in the group a few weeks ago, has anyone ever tracked their macros to be in maintenance on purpose? And none of us had, like one person, Connie had, and I'm so glad she's here in the group with us, but it's just not that typical. And I would love to see that be more typical because you all, it feels really good to be at your maintenance calories, to be eating plenty of fuel and know again, it's not too much, it's not too little, you have so much energy. It, it feels really good. Can you tell I'm a little diet fatigued? And this is another reason why I put a time limit on this cut. This is another reason why I love learning that in Macros 101, the course I'm taking through biceps after babies, um, and said, yeah, this is good stuff. It's so great to um, have that mindset that this is gonna end on a certain day. I'm not gonna spend my life in a deficit, always thinking I'm not good enough, always needing to lose more. I'm not doing that anymore. Instead, we're putting a time frame around this cut and when it's over, it's over, and then we're moving back up to maintenance, and we can come back to the cut later. Part of reversing back up to maintenance and staying in maintenance can be 
that then the next time you go back to cut, you won't have to cut as low. You won't have to go as low on your calories because you may have gently raised your metabolism and you can then burn more body fat during that time, reverse back up, be in maintenance and kind of flow through those cycles as needed for the goals that you have for yourself. Super interesting, huh? And I'm asking as many questions I can in the biceps after babies group I'm in of other 40 year olds and 50 year olds because I see something interesting. A pattern I'm noticing is that when we're already in menopause, that there seems to be like one, a little bit actually easier to figure out situation there. But in this 40 and 50 year old range, when you are at the tipping point between pre-menopause and menopause, there's just so many factors to wade through when it comes to weight loss that it starts to feel crazy discouraging. And it's made it all the more clear to me that there is no one right answer for everyone. And then, so knowing that, the more we know, the better off we'll be. The broader our perspective and view on what we're doing is the better off we'll be. So if I were to have come to faster weight of fat loss and macros 101, just wanting to weigh 140 pounds, I would feel like a failure right now and I would have given up. But look what really happened to me. So much more wonderfulness than getting to weigh 140 pounds. So all the more reason to just keep spreading the message that once we're in that 40 year old, 50 year old range, so we're pre-menopause, we're not yet 12 months without a period. That's once you've hit that, that's when we say you're in menopause. And the, what's going on behind the scenes there is the amount of progesterone and estrogen and testosterone being released really changes dramatically. And that has dramatic impact on weight in everything, sleep, cortisol levels, all your hormones. And so because we are in that range of those hormones changing, 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 it's hard to do this work on ourselves and know what's happening because there's many variables out of our control. So here's the perfect segue into why I'm so glad I had my progress mindset that I'm not just here for a number on the scale. I'm here for wellness, energy, sleep, muscle, um, being an active woman who get to retire with other active women, like Julia says, I love it. I love that, Julia. Um, I'm here for all of that and I'm so glad because here's what happened in week six. Yes, week six, we, um, my weight went all the way down to 144 and my measurements went down in my um, two inches above my waist, at my waist and below, I believe, but not my hips. Then go into week seven, and I'm not sure if it's connected, but I'm ovulating in week seven. My weight went up to 146 pretty quickly. And um, that said, my measurements stayed the same. One went down a quarter of an inch and I think that was my belly measurement, right at the belly button. So, so interesting, right? And it's like, why did that weight go from 144 to 146? And these are averages. So it wasn't just one day it was 144 and one day it was 146. It was four days it was 144. And then for five to six days, it was 146 when you averaged all the numbers. So you can see if all I was doing was shooting for a goal of weighing a certain number on the scale, I would have felt defeated, lack of progress, terrible mindset, but I knew that wasn't my goal. And I also knew I'm feeling lean and strong. And I did see measurements, especially that belly button one go down. So that's a huge sign that you're burning body fat. Likely you could have other measurements go up if you were building muscle, but right around that belly button, we're not building a lot of muscle bulk right there. So most likely when that girl goes down, you're burning body fat, an important body fat that's around your organs and can be a threat to your health. So when I'm looking at the big picture, it was a win. Week six was a win. Week seven was a win. I'm making the progress I want to make. And so I don't want to change what I'm doing. I'm just going to keep on on the path I'm on for right now until we're finished with week eight. We'll kind of take a grain of salt with vacation week. Week after vacation will definitely be a grain of salt week, which to me means like, I'm not going to freak out about any of it because my body needs to adjust from having been in a different country and drinking different water and eating different food. And I'm not going to bring a food scale. And, um, I will just be mindful of eating whole food nutrition. I don't, I just don't feel well anymore when I have alcohol. So what that vacation week isn't 
it's not that I'm like, oh, I can't wait to have all these drinks. It's just not on my radar. I do think it'd be fun to have some treats, maybe more than just one treat day. But I also know, I was talking to Wanda about this, who's in our group here, but she's also one of my faster clients, that I also know that I just don't feel good when I get re-addicted to sugar. And I truly get addicted to sugar very quickly. And so I'm like gonna wait in my mind and be just make some decisions over the coming days of, is it really going to be important to me to have ice cream every day in Mexico? Is that what will be bringing me happiness? Or will feeling free and light and happy and just enjoying fun with my family be what brings me happiness? So if I choose the ice cream, is it gonna stand in the way of my enjoyment and my well-being ultimately? Or is the deprivation going to stand in the way of having fun? I'll just have to make those decisions for myself and see how it goes. And so it sure could happen that my measurements won't change on vacation week and my weight might go up. I might have more sodium and I might get in less water and retain more water. We'll see. I'm not going to be going crazy to even get my workouts in while we're in Mexico. I'm just going to, you know, we're going to a place on purpose that is really active and it's a huge water sports place. So we'll get in lots of movement, I'm sure. So that's going to be just all the more reason again, like I said, to take that vacation week as, you know, just have fun, relax, take a break and come back with the right mindset that my body is going to need its week to readjust. Then I'll do that. Like I said, one last week of 1650 calories, and then I'm going to move into a reverse where I'll slowly add on calories and um, track my weight and my measurements to let my body tell me what's happening. In theory, well, I'll add on about 100 calories a week until I see my body begin to gain weight on the scale and gain weight in my measurements. And then I'll know that's the stop point and I might even back down 100 calories from there and say, this number-ish is my maintenance-ish. <laughs> so you'll be there with me. I'll share all of how that goes. I know for a lot of people that's the scary part. I have to admit for me it's not as scary because I know I was at 2,000 calories in maintaining, so I'm not as scared about having dropped down and now I'm gonna gently go back up. And hopefully the getting to see me do that and just see how it goes will give you all some um, peace of mind to think about maybe using a reverse dieting, maintenance, cutting type of approach to your wellness journey in the future and um, see what results it yields for you along the way. As I've been saying, if you want to learn more, I highly recommend the Biceps After Babies radio podcast and the Biceps After Babies website. Super informative, lots of free resources, and um, can just be pretty eye-opening to let yourself think, again, beyond just reaching a number on the scale and the different ways that you can let yourself do that over time. So I am going to have some berry ice cream I'm going to make for myself today. I'll share lots of pictures. I saw a fast away coach Stacy, um, Stacy T. Miller share this that she did with some fresh frozen blackberries and raspberries. I'm going to try that at lunchtime and I'm going to have some leftover of my leaner version of the egg roll in a bowl. And then come dinner, we are having um, one of Lily Eats and Tells shredded pork tenderloin Instapot recipes that has Greek seasoning. If you did the protein power hour with me, you tried the one that had um, like a green salsa seasoning. It was amazing. So I'm really looking forward to this one. And I'm gonna have a piece of pita bread with that, cucumbers, tomatoes, all the like Greek flavors and a bit over a big bed of romaine is the plan. So in case you're wondering, how it's going with eating at that 1650 and you haven't noticed it, I've been sharing that on my personal page and here and on my Instagram. And so once I wrap this up, I'm gonna put it, I'll put in the post the different places to see the food items, the cuts of meat that I'm going with, the portion sizes I'm leveraging so I can be at this 1,650 calories level and still feel full and satisfied. A big piece of the puzzle there has been to ensure that I eat enough fiber so um, that looks like berries and cabbage and you know spinach with my meals, um, uh, coconut flakes, avocado, 
um, I'm really leaning into making sure I have enough carbs, proteins, and fats at each meal. All the strategies I learned in the Fast Away to Fat Loss that truly help you feel balanced and full because they're taking great care of your blood sugar via your insulin, your master hormone. I'm really leaning into all of those and they're making this much more tolerable and doable to be in this cut. The whole food nutrition is really your friend all the time and very much my friend right now in this cut. More important than ever for feeling well and like um, having the right mindset and even having enough energy being at this lower calorie setting. So just been super interesting. It's so fun to get to share this with you all. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and I am looking forward to checking with you next week, midweek, right before we go on vacation and let you know how it goes in the eighth week. Have a good day, everybody.